Well, we'll keep an eye on that deal and see what eventually happens. Now, let's look at the big topic today. That's the Iran's announcement uh, that will be tonight. Uh, the U.S. President Donald Trump set to make his speech. How is all of this affecting today's trading day? Yeah, investors are a little bit uh, reluctant, I would say. This is happening after a very successful trading day yesterday. You can see it very well in the background. We are not really uh, going into the winning zone right now. We are at a level of 12,870 points. So we are down with 0.7% at the moment. The biggest loser, by the way, is Deutsche Post, the German uh, mail company. They provided uh, quarterly numbers today, and they were rather disappointing. Their shares even went down uh, by 6%. So yes, everybody will be waiting uh, what Donald Trump will be announcing tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern time in Washington about the uh, about this uh, deal or not anymore deal, we have to say. Uh, investors do feel that possible new sanctions on Iran could hurt the business. We have to remember that Iran uh, lately has been getting more and more important for many industries here in Europe. We just have to talk, for example, about air Airbus uh, from France, um, uh, Iran announced in the past that they want to order a large number of uh, passenger planes, uh, even maybe the A380 for their uh, national carrier. Uh, also Volkswagen, the German automaker, uh, wants to uh, sell more cars in Iran. So with possible uh, sanctions, all of these businesses uh, could be uh, become uh, more, more uh, difficult, maybe not even possible. We'll have to wait. Of course, we have to wait for Trump to speak tonight. Thank you very much for your time, Daniel. Well, in the U.S., stock index futures fluctuated ahead of Tuesday's open as markets around the world turned their attention to the U.S. administration and the future of the country's involvement in the 2015 nuclear accord with Iran. Around 4.20 a.m. Eastern time, Dow futures slipped 21 points, indicating a lower open of 19.32 points. The Nasdaq and the S&P 500 futures indicated a relatively flat to lower start to the session for their respective markets. The moves in pre-market trade come as global markets remain on edge, awaiting an announcement by President Donald Trump on the future of an international nuclear agreement. In spite of the U.S. incumbents' threats to pull out, President Hassan Rouhani stated that Iran had a plan to counter any move made by Trump when it comes to the deal. While it is widely expected that the U.S. president will withdraw the country from the accord, Rouhani says that Iran would continue to seek constructive relations with the world despite potential sanctions. And in Asia, markets closed higher today with oil prices tracking lower following President Donald Trump's announcement that he would make a decision on the Iran nuclear deal. The Nikkei financials and technology rose while the mining and oil sectors fell 1.41% and 1.33%. Across the Korean Street, the benchmark cost per slipped 0.47% to close at 2000 449.81 points. Over in Hong Kong, the Hang Seng Index advanced 1.4% amid broad-based gains. Mainland markets also saw convincing gains, with the Shanghai Composite closing higher by 0.8% and the Shenzhen Composite edging up by 0.77% to 1,836.22 points. In Australia, the S&P ASS 200 added 0.12%, to finish the day at 6,091.9 as the 0.82% gain in the financial sector supported the index's overall gains despite declines in energy and materials. And back here on the African continent, the African Development Bank seeks investments from global pensions and commercial financiers to help fund the continent's infrastructure gap of as much as $170 billion a year. The Abidjan-based lender is launching its Africa Investment Forum in Johannesburg today. The forum will host its first meeting in November in South Africa's commercial hub and will have no speeches, but rather 
present bankable projects to investors. The continent has an infrastructure funding gap of $87 billion to $120 billion annually, as according to AFDB's estimates. This strains economic growth in a region that is one of the world's poorest, despite having vast mineral resources. Substandard roads, ports and airports add to the cost of exporting commodities and hamper intra-regional trade. It's a unique platform for investment, finance, transparent transactions, and a genuine African marketplace for closing deals to accelerate the economic development of Africa. Africa's infrastructure financing needs are estimated to be between 130 and 170 billion US dollars per year. However, total commitments came to just about $63 billion in 2016. As it has been for decades, national governments are still the main providers of infrastructure finance in Africa. This represents a financing gap of approximately 67 to 107 billion US dollars in just infrastructure alone. While the African Development Bank and many other multilateral partners and donors are making significant contributions, this still does not close that gap. But Africa can, and Africa must do so. There are extraordinary deals to be had in Africa. The Africa Investment Forum is a perfect position, is in perfect position to identify and shape these deals for investors, fund managers, and others managing substantial assets. Together, let's offer the world a collective deal of the century for investment and development of Africa. In the meantime, the African Development Bank is leading talks with Zimbabwe and its creditors to make plans for the nation to pay off some of its arrears so it can restore relations with lenders. During almost two decades of economic mismanagement, the Southern African nation's debt surged to more than 70 percent of gross domestic product and the economy has halved in size since 2000. While Zimbabwe has paid $110 million of arrears to the International Monetary Fund, it's still saddled with $1.7 billion of arrears to the AFDB and World Bank. The Finance Ministry forecasts total debt of $14.5 billion in the 2018 budget. It needs to clear the arrears so it can once again seek foreign assistance from lenders such as the IMF. And a Zimbabwean mining company is considering upgrading a local nickel refinery to produce battery-grade lithium or alternatively build a new lithium carbonate plant at a cost of up to $150 million. Lithium is in demand globally as a battery metal needed for the shift to electric vehicles and renewable power. Zimbabwe has said it has the potential to supply 20% of the world's lithium. Zimbabwe is one of the top 10 lithium producers, but currently produces only a fraction of the worldwide total. When we come back after the break, financial derivatives think tank projects a drop in the inflation numbers for April. To stay with us. <music> 